to my talk about the Lord, I was just going to, you know, say, you know, we were preparing the cross and we walked to the Lord, and I'd like to share this with you that my, my roommates gave me, but they won't let me do that He's weird. Drew gave me one. He's okay. just. Yes, I'm waiting. I still got a pack, so let's hurry, please. Okay, I'm ready. Are you going to film my feet on holes in my Mike, socks? Mike, please. How are you not going to film your socks? Are you going to film my socks? No, they're not. This is. Can't even see them. Oh. Can't even see them. That's pretty funny. Come on, Mikey. Come on, Mike. Mike is going to put his sunglasses on, right? That's because you're just totally cool. Move over, guys. Just move over here. No, over no. Mike, just stand right Mike, there. Mike, put your eagle on the uh, side there. It just it looks, doesn't look that portable like that. Mike, this is not for uh, This video. is for radio. This is for radio. Otherwise, it wouldn't be one of my Washington, D.C. <laughs> guys, go. Come on. Please. Okay. First question. Uh, for the whole band, what are Do you want us all to answer at once? Goals? Well, we just completed our That's first major question. video, which is imaginary music, and we're anticipating some some really good things. But it's hard to to say what what the goals are. When we initially started this band, we had no idea that we'd come to this place. So right now, we're pretty much where the Lord takes us. Uh, is where we're going. But we anticipate. We're hoping to, to hook up on a major tour. We're hoping to to go triple platinum with the record, and we're hoping to continue making records that that make a positive impact on. Uh, I'm whoever buys our music and uh, just trying to make a, an awareness of, of what's going on around. All right, I'll go first, uh, your names and let's see, your names and then what your parents think of you know, being in Baron Cross. How <laughs> <laughs> about what they used to think? <laughs> what they used well, to think or what they yeah. think? Well, what, when you first got in the band, what they you know, used to think and now what they, you know, get a job. <laughs> I'm Ray Paris, and when I first, well, I think they didn't care until I quit um, college, <laughs> and then they started wondering what was going on. Uh, so at first they weren't real um, hip on the idea, but now they are a 100% support. I call my dad, you know, a couple times a week and get advice on you know business things and as well as spiritual things. So it's really good now. They're they're really behind us. I'm Steve Whitaker, drummer for Baron Cross, and my all my parents, both my parents, they're separated. My two all families. your parents. All my parents, yeah. <laughs> um, they were a bit skeptical at first, and we re rehearsed for a very long time at my mother's house. So first time she saw these guys walk up the driveway, she thought, "Oh my lord, what am I getting into?" But um, now she's probably our number one biggest support and, and fan, and she's written a book about uh, Christian music and and uh, what's going on, and uh, for my father, my father's been a musician all my life since I was born, my whole family's in music, and for a long time he figured this was going to end real soon, and I'd go back to work, and he owns a company, and he offered me a, a job in, and uh, as we left on this tour, and as the weeks went on, I didn't come <coughs> home again, he realized I wasn't going, he got very excited, and he, as he saw magazine articles come out, and and uh, it's, it's been a blessing. They're very, well, all of them, both of them, <laughs> very, very excited and very supportive. All eight of them. All eight, all eight moms and dads. We call them, I, I called my mother-in-law, as a matter of fact, from the Empire State Building, was in New York, New York City, and that was really exciting too. But um, it's going good. My name is Mike Lee, I sing for Grand Cross, and uh, my, my mom and dad, um, my mommy and daddy, used to, uh, Feed me. <laughs> but, uh, then I went to college. I went to college uh, to see if I can learn to feed myself. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Um, <laughs> it's I, went to, it's, it's I went to college for two weeks. All right, I had computer training and uh, for two weeks, and then I couldn't handle it, so I dropped out and uh, decided, well, the music business is for me. And uh, that was pretty much around the time when uh, uh, 
Well, I became a Christian a couple of years earlier than that, but uh, but I'm now getting my story all screwed up. And, uh, they want to know what your parents think of it. They don't care where you're from and what you're doing. What do your mom and dad think of this thing? My parents have kicked him out of the country. Yeah, you know? that's why he's in California because they kicked him out of France. Um, yeah, I was uh, really born in Nicaragua, Nicaragua, and. Uh, See, that's where the, the, uh, the song Terrorist Child came from. Both my parents come to our concerts and are yeah. very supportive. So I'm, so I'm you used to be not supportive really at all. I used to wonder, well, they, they used to really push school on me, going to college, but, uh, Good. Yeah. you know, get a real job, the whole thing. But uh, they're not very supportive, so. My turn? Here. I don't know if there's a guy something. It's a guy Okay, I get that. Hello, my name is Heen. My name is Heen. I'm sorry. Okay. We're okay, really. We are normal. You guys don't do this to me, man. Jim is very fond of Jim. You're laughing in front of 18 million people. Alright. Okay. My name. My name is. <laughs> My name is Jim Laverty, and uh, I play bass guitar for the band. Thanks, he does. Baron Cross, I do. I do. Yeah, My uh, dad thought that I was crazy when I first joined the band, and um, I, I brought him our first, the first demo tape that I recorded with them, um, with that has one of my favorite songs called "Is Called He Is With You." <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You just say. Anyway, so I brought this this um, tape to my dad, and, and he heard it, and he said, man, who is that singer? <laughs> That's the first thing he said was, oh, my gosh. Anyway, <laughs> and anyway, so uh, so I kept I kept continuing with the band, and as, as the band got uh, to, to play in bigger places, you know, he started coming to the shows. And uh, I can remember one, the one show he came to was uh, Calvary Chapel Downey when we over, opened up for Daryl Mansfield. And we had, there was about 1,500 people there. It was packed. And uh, he could not even believe, you know, all these people came out to actually see Daryl Mansfield, but he couldn't actually believe that we were playing in front of that many people. Um, and so um, he was actually the first person to lay down the money on the table to help us with our, uh, with our first EP, Believe. And Steve's mom and... Uh, uh, Ray's, yeah, Ray's mom and Mike's mom, <laughs> mom and dad are very much out of the picture. No, but uh, but anyways, they really helped us out financially, and they really, really believe in the band, and uh, you know, it's been that story ever since. I have two dogs and a cat, and that's really the most important thing here. Shut up. Okay. Very well. I heard the last count was 48 million. No, we <laughs> wish it was 48 million. <laughs> it's projected to, to, to get 100,000 uh, approaching the end of the month, is it's what they're talking. So it's, it's going it's very well. Each concert, each place we go into, <laughs> each, each uh, city, uh, the record sales are picking up. So we're doing our part, record company's doing their part, and we're, we're waiting, anticipating you know, more sales. But right now, I don't have an accurate figure, but it's approaching 100,000. Mm. Well, yeah, we we were in negotiations with Enigma Records, and we got a very good deal. And uh, you know, it it also was a very um, positive, very very positive thing for the band because we were able to write better songs. And it was, yeah, I mean, it's better. You know, it's like we didn't we didn't write hurry up songs. I mean, we took time to write Living Dead. We took time to write In the Eye of the Fire, which were complicated songs, and so it was better. It also helped us spiritually too. It helped me spiritually. And uh, it was fantastic, a good time of waiting. And uh, Jim it was worth it. twice in the process. <laughs> and uh, Ray talked me into coming back in. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember this one rainy night after practice, but anyway. Yeah, this is yeah, true. a true story. I quit twice. I mean, it's real frustrating, you know, eight months go by and you're still waiting for your record contract, wondering if they're just going to drop the whole thing or. Mm -hmm. Drop the ball or run with it. But, uh, because of it, we have a very good relationship with our record company. It shows yeah. us that they really wanted to work with us, and it showed them that we really wanted to work with them. So it's, yeah, it's a really good situation right now. For us. Yeah, it's been a blessing ever since. They're good record. We like Enigma. Yay. We, yay, Enigma coming. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
Hi, Wes. I said, hi, Wes Hines. <laughs> How are you? Three. Wait, wait, wait. Say you. Uh, Mike Lee, lead vocals. Everybody but him. Lead vocals. I am not married. <laughs> <laughs> lead vocals are married. Drummer yeah. and the guitar player yeah. are married. The guitar player is married. Mm-hmm. Jim likes his bass a lot. I take my bass. To bed. Okay. <laughs> Edit that part. Edit, Edit that part. Mm-hmm. What about uh, musical influence? Musical influence. Um, early on, my influences were Richie Blackmore, um, Al Di Miola, and currently I enjoy um, that new dude, Santriani, Joe Santriani, and what's the other guy? Vinnie Moore. Vinnie Moore, very good guitar player. I enjoy a lot of that. Uh, gosh, there's a ton. I like the guy over at Lab Sound, too. Steve. Uh, Vince. <laughs> Vince at Lab Sound just got a plug. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, literally, my initial influence was my uncle was playing in clubs when I was growing up, and I was three years old. But uh, my favorite drummers, I really admire Tommy Aldridge and Steve Smith. Okay. My turn, bass players? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Finally, my turn. No, 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 no. I really admire Danny Bonaducci, Partridge Family. <laughs> He's <laughs> it's my ass. Do, yeah. <laughs> they opened up for us once. You better edit that. They're friends of ours, but uh, they're good. They, yeah. they I'm good. Honestly, yeah. actually, 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 David Cassidy and Danny Bonaducci and, and the guy Chris that plays drums, the little guy, they're in the group. They grew long hair. Anyway, my my true real influences are like uh, Spaghetti Lee from Rush. I'm sorry, Getty Lee, um, Chris Squire. Um, you know, Jaco Pastoria, who is now it's deceased. Awesome. Yeah, he's deceased. Very good. Uh, what band was he in? Jaco. Uh, ja- yeah. Jaco Pastoria Pastoria's band. band. <laughs> I think I was really ugly. <laughs> anyways, he's. Uh, Abraham anyways, Laborio. Abraham, Abraham Laborio, just, you know, on all the best bass players are my influences. Yeah, not I'm, not influences I'm not influenced by people that, like, play bass on, on one on. note. And I like, Judas, Judas Priest people, like. <laughs> he likes bass players to play E and go home. <laughs> well, my main influences, uh, as far as songwriting, has is, is been a lot of pr- a lot of from the progressive background. Uh, King Crimson, Yes, and uh, Kansas were basically my favorite bands. Also, Black Sabbath. Um, I I would say Ronnie James Dio has always been my favorite voice. And uh, uh, he's he's basically a jerk, but he's a good singer. <laughs> Yeah, that's a great way to put it. <laughs> okay. Edit. Edit. <laughs> Edit right now. If Dio ever hears this, it's basically it. Oh, okay. Leave this interview. <laughs> um, a lot of people you know, say, well, like, I think these Christian bands, they don't listen to Christian music. Is that the case in this band? That we don't listen we don't to Christian music? I mean, yeah, they just we don't listen to the music. Well, I think that there's a balance with that. Um, when I, f- when I first joined the band, I was very, if you listen to any kind of secular music, you're going to go to hell and lose your salvation. And, um, and that's not true. Um, you know, I, th- I think that um, you got to be careful what goes into your, into your mind. You know, if you're listening to a song that has bad words, I'm sorry, Steve, uh, a song that has bad words in it, and that's going into your mind, obviously. But, you know, um, you know jo- Joe Citriani does music that's just music, you know, right? You know, I mean, and we listen to his tape, you know, and we think he's, I think he's a fantastic musician. There's no words or lyrics. Um, but I, I wouldn't listen to, you know, Number of the Beast over and over and over again by Iron Maiden because I know that that would probably drag me down spiritually. And so, so there's a real fine balance with that. It comes down to, uh, I think, uh, not just secular music, but how much time do you spend involving yourself and developing your mind with things of the world and how much time you spend in the Word of God and, mm-hmm. and seeking the Lord. So, uh, you know, it's, that's, that's a hard question to say. Some of my favorite bands are Christian bands, and uh, there's so much good Christian music coming out that it, it's comparable to anything that any secular person can put out. Michael Jackson, any of those people, there's, there's too good a Christian music to, uh, to, to have to listen to secular music, but, you know, there's good secular music too. My my views on that, I I think that um, it really like Jim was saying, you know, what what goes in comes out, you know.